newcomers to the Tower of Durago will probably end up dying quite a lot. You'll be slashing away at enemies wondering why they won't die. In fact, the controls go against everything you're probably accustomed to. In this game, the way you kill enemies is to run into them with your sword already drawn out. This means you'll spend quite a lot of time with your finger pressed on the fire button. Be careful though, as you can only kill enemies when they're not moving, so timing is essential. In later stages you'll also have to be wary of projectiles. Having your sword drawn means your shield is tucked away. It won't do you any good unless it's in front of you, which means, yep, you guessed it, putting your sword away. First thing you'll notice about the MSX version is that it plays a little faster than its arcade big brother. The speed increase makes for a more exciting game which really keeps you on the edge, once you reach the 5th floor. With the arcade original being developed by Namco, it comes as no surprise to see an enhanced version on the PC Engine. Gone is the time limit per stage and in comes a life meter, which can be powered up each time you complete a floor. In fact, there are many aspects of your character that can be powered up, from the strength of his sword to the speed at which he walks. There's also a password system introduced into this port, allowing you to play just a few floors at a time. Unlike the PC Engine version we just saw, the Game Boy version of Tower of Duraga is basically a straight port of the arcade game, in the way you move at a snail's pace, and have a timer counting down as you struggle to find the exit. Being a portable version though, you are given a password feature to allow you to play a few levels at a time. What we have here is a complete non-thrills port. Namco were behind it, but unlike the PC Engine version, this is as bare bones as you can get. There isn't even a health counter which the Game Boy version had. Yep, one hit deaths in this port just like the arcade. This isn't a bad port, just a very basic one.
time to take a look at an early Japanese home computer version, the Fujitsu FM7. It's a fairly good looking port that unfortunately suffers from jerky movement. Sticking with the Japanese home computers and yet another straight port from the arcade, but with surprisingly detailed graphics for such an early machine. The stereo separation on the audio is also pretty good. Sadly, Tower of Duraga just feels too slow to keep your interest. As you'd expect, the Sharp X68000 version looks arcade perfect, but I did notice one very annoying aspect. At times, the game would place the key and door so far apart that it was impossible to exit the stage before the timer ran out. I don't know if I was just having an unlucky spell on the game, or if it does actually do that for everyone from time to time. And let's take a look at all those versions of Tower of Duraga running side by side. <laughs> 